thinking the Old Testament is irrelevant? Would God work so hard with the patriarchs of old and the prophets to write in a book for future generations and then say it is useless? Perhaps the better questions we need to ask are, what secrets are encoded in the Torah that would equip modern generations to master their economies? Are they secrets hidden in the life of Abraham that would enable a business to become a blessing to a generation? Was the African continent born for oppression and slavery? Dr. Tich Tananyua has had several encounters with God that have moved him to writing the Wealth Mastery Trilogy. Three powerful books that are loaded with biblical evidence that God wants you wealthy. In these encounters, Dr. Tich Tananyua has invested over 7,000 hours of research going through the Torah to unravel the ancient secrets of the Hebrew nation. The books will enable the reader to discover how to break free from financial and economic slavery, wisdom to manage personal finances and establish generational wealth. 
how to use your wealth to change the world for the good of mankind. God's plan has always been to establish the earth as the colony of heaven. As in the words of the Messiah, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. These three books will bring you back to the understanding of the original purpose for wealth and position you to be a world shaker. From housewife to CEO, from street vendor to president, from children to business leaders, you need to get this wisdom not just in your head, but in your spirit. Prepare to go on your greatest journey ever. Good evening and welcome to 52 Days of Building the Walls of Africa. It is a wonderful time that we are living in and God is at work on our continent. And I really want to encourage you, begin to change your perspective. We are here to go on an amazing journey for the next 52 days. 52 days we're going to be praying for Africa. 52 days we'll focus on different countries in Africa. 52 days we will have different men and women of God coming on this into this studio and sharing a word with us to pray with us, to prophesy over Africa and to prophesy over specific countries. Today is a day dedicated to South Africa, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that just now. And as we go through this period of time, we are going to speak the word over our continent. God called Jacob to go to Egypt and told him, don't be afraid to go to Egypt because I'm going with you. I'll preserve you and protect you. He arrives in Egypt and the first meeting they have is a board meeting between Pharaoh, Joseph and Jacob. Jacob goes on to speak a blessing over the father of the, the political arena, which was Pharaoh, and present was his son, who happened to be the father to Pharaoh, if you read the scriptures, and he's the father of the economic environment of Egypt and the region. When, when Jacob speaks the blessing over Pharaoh twice in that passage of scripture, the Bible then shows us thereafter the famine stopped. So we will have 52 fathers. Some are male fathers, some will be female fathers that will be coming into the studio to speak a word over our countries, over our continent. And as we join our faith together, we are going to change the spiritual atmosphere and the famine over Africa has been rebuked. The famine over our continent is over. It's a brand new season. It's a brand new time for Africa. God God is calling Africa to arise, just like he says in Isaiah, arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And I'm sure you heard the song playing earlier on, beautiful song that God placed on my heart when I wrote it um, just a couple of weeks ago took it to a producer who was able to come up with that beautiful masterpiece. And like we told you, we're going to be running specials. If you can create a little video, a 30 second video dancing to that and post it on our webs on our face Facebook pages, we're going to see who's got the best uh, video clip and you could win yourself some amazing, amazing awards that will be coming up very, very soon. So 52 days, we're praying for Africa. 52 days, we're sowing the word into Africa. 52 days, we're prophesying over our continent. Why? To change the spiritual atmosphere. Let me give you two quick scriptures that, will, that show us why we are doing this. The Bible tells us in the book of Nehemiah, this is Nehemiah chapter uh, 6 and verse 15 and 16. Let's read. It says, the wall was finished on the 25th day on the 25th day um, of the month of Elu, in the 52 days was it completed. Wonderful. Yesterday was the 25th day of May, which happened to be Africa Day. And this project was finished on the, uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, the, the day it is significant for us. 52 days was the completion of the project on the 25th day of the month of Elu. Prophetic and significant for us. I believe the atmosphere has changed 
changed over Africa. I believe God is going to do something amazing. But listen to what he says in verse 16. When all our enemies heard it and all the surrounding nations saw it, they were tremendously humbled. They perceived that because our God, this work had been accomplished. Glory to God forevermore. The enemies will see what God is doing, and they will see that God has done a great work in our continent. What God is doing now, no man can stop, no man can frustrate, no man can delay, derail, or, or stop what God has begun. No weapon formed against us will prosper, and every time that is raised we condemn because this continent is a blessed continent and then the second scripture I want to read for you today is in the book of Ezra chapter 6 it says in verse 14 it says the rebuilding by the elders and the Jews prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo they built it and they finished according to the decree of God praise God forevermore and Israel and Israel according to the decrees of Cyrus Darius Artaxerxes the king of Persia now the kings had made a decree these kings had made a decree that the the temple was to be built and the work stopped pause was frustrated and the prophets began to prophesy so we're calling on the true prophets of God to arise the true men and women of God that have a word from heaven arise now this is the time to prophesy don't hold back the Lord has spoken who can but prophesy amen glory to God forevermore now based on this we have our 52 days starting today that for the next 52 days we're going to be praying and like I said we're praying for our wonderful wonderful country today South Africa right at the tip of the, the continent of Africa is a beautiful country called South Africa now God laid this on my heart and he said a lot of people in Africa don't know how beautiful their country their countries are their continent is so he says take out as many facts as you can and begin to celebrate them so we we are creating a prayer book, a celebration note workbook that you can look at. It's going to be posted on our website and I'll tell you more details, but you'll be able to look at all these wonderful facts about our countries individually and our continent as a whole. There is so much to celebrate. We were told we are the dark continent. The mistake was not the fact that somebody said we're the dark continent. The mistake was the fact that we believed it. We are not dark. We are enlightened. We are wise. We have the glory of God upon us and Africa is awakening to the truth. So if you believe it, type amen right now. Type I agree, type I believe it. They speak a blessing, type a blessing for Africa right there. Begin to say, I celebrate Africa. I celebrate that I'm African. I celebrate that I'm on the beautiful, most beautiful continent in the world. And we're going to prove it for the next 52 days to show you that Africa is the most beautiful continent on the whole planet amazing so let's go through a couple of exciting things here i want to share with you some of what we discovered as we were doing some of our research the land is wonderful has got wonderful natural beauty table mountain is one of the oldest mountains on the planet it has more species of flowers than england and wales and ireland and scotland combined just Table Mountain has got more flowers than England, Scotland, Ireland. What? My goodness, we are a blessed continent, are we? South Africa has 10 UNESCO designated World Heritage Sites. The top, I mean, no other country can boast of that many. God is amazing. The, the, the Congo Caves near the, I was told this is Oats, Oatsden. Oats, it's an Afrikaans word. I'm learning my Afrikaans. It says, it, it says that the, these caves are the world's longest underground cave sequence. The world's longest. We have some of the some of the things we have in South Africa. No one else in the world has them. Do you notice that the Babaton Mountain Range in Mpumalanga remains to be one of the best preserved, least altered rock formations in the world? 
Praise God. We are blessed in South Africa. Johannesburg is the biggest man-made forest in the world. The city has more than 10 million trees living lined up on the streets praise god isn't that amazing god is so good we, we are told so many negative things about our country and our continent but all of this is beautiful to know the fish migration is so huge that it can be seen from out of space the annual sardines out in the cave the annual sardines run which has uh, which has been referred to as the greatest show on earth isn't that wonderful all these great things are happening in your country, South Africa. We need to celebrate. God has been good to us. We've been looking at what's going wrong and forgetting all that's going right. The industrial powerhouse of the, of the region, South Africa, is the only place in the world where Mercedes-Benz manufacturers, manufacturers right-hand drive cars. The Palace of the Lost City is the biggest theme resort hotel in the world, the largest project undertaken in the in the southern hemisphere that's exciting now don't you realize that it's worth celebrating our country worth celebrating what god and all of this is in africa who would have boasted to tell us tourists would rather travel and and come here to africa than any other place in the region i'm so so excited uh, South Africa is extremely rich in mining, minerals, and is considered the, the world's largest with 90% of all the platinum metals on earth and around 41% of the world's gold. Praise God. Almost half of the world's gold comes from this very place that we are planted in. 65% of the world's diamonds from Southern Africa and the most mined in is South Africa itself, the world's largest diamond. The Cullinan is worth 400 million US dollars was found in South African soil. Uh, Chris Honey Baragwanath Hospital happens to be the world's third largest hospital in the, my goodness, we are blessed, aren't we? Tourists love this country. World-renowned luxury hotels, resorts, including the world's most luxurious train is in South Africa, the Rovers Rail. Praise God, aren't we blessed? We are a blessed country. We need to celebrate this. Extreme sports with the world's largest cycle race, the Cape Argus, and the highest commercial bungee jumping bridge in the world. Marine Overland Safari, amazing. Marine and Overland Safari, the best in the world. Sightseeing, the best in the world. Praise God. I could go on and on. No, this one is really interesting. Uh, innovations. South Africa is known to have, uh, what is it, the, the creepy crawly, remember the creepy crawly invented in South Africa, Prickly Party invented in South Africa, Q20 invented in 1950, Wazulu Natal, praise God, the smart lock safety syringe, South Africa, South Africa is, has the second oldest film industry in the world. Isn't that beautiful? We have Nobel Prize winners in South Africa. 43 patented inventions come from the very soil that we are sitting on. The first human heart transplant happened in Cape Town, South Africa. Vilagazi Street in Soweto, South Africa is the one street in the world to have housed a Nobel Prize winner, Nelson Mandela. Praise God. Oh, now I need to pause because I've run out of time on this. The last one, here's the last one, and we're going to the time of prayer and getting a powerful prophetic word uh, uh, right here on 52 days of building. The last one is, did you know rooibos tea is naturally caffeine free and is only found in the Cedarburg in Western Cape province? Healthy tea. Isn't that wonderful? What a blessed country. I could go on. The facts are amazing. But we need to move on with the program. I just wanted you to know when we pray for South Africa today, this is what we must pray knowing we have. We're a blessed continent. Our, our leaders are blessed. Our country is blessed. So let's join and go over and join Apostle Nikki. It's going to be awesome. 
Thank you so much. Wow, it has been wonderful learning about what God is doing in our wonderful, wonderful country, South Africa. It's really been great to know that God has put so much potential on the African continent, but today, particularly for South Africa, a beautiful country loaded with resources, loaded with mining, agriculture, human resources, intellectual property that is amazing. Today, we are so privileged as we begin our days of prayer and rebuilding the walls of Africa to be, to be joined by my spiritual father, Apostle Nikki van der and the founder and senior pastor of New Beginnings Christian Family Church. I am so blessed and so honored uh, today because he is such a man of God. God has caused him to be such a voice not just for South Africa and Africa, but globally, taking the supernatural to the nations, walking and living in the supernatural power of God, taking the legacy of uh, Nikki van der Verstaysen Sr. and taking it to the next level. It has been such an honor watching what God has been doing uh, with Apostle Nikki. Uh, Dad, thank you so much. It's such a joy, such an honor to have you today on 52 days of rebuilding the walls of Africa. You are such an apostolic voice, such a prophetic voice for our country and for our continent and for the globe. Thank you so much for joining in. It's my honor, son, to uh, spend this time with you and to kick this wonderful project off with you. You know, you are uh, the voice of, Af of Africa. I really believe God is our and to carry a message of wealth and of the glory of God to wherever, you know, the, the continent, you know, is able to listen to you. And I really believe now is the time more than ever before to do this 52 days of prayer, get people united, get people to the place where they can become wealthy. And God has positioned you to really spearhead this new move of the Holy Spirit. And we are very excited to stand with you. And with your beautiful family, Francisca, and all the families there, we love you very, very much. Thank you so much, Apostle. It's such an honor. And just to kick off right now, um, I, know, I know for all the years I've known you, you've been praying for South Africa and Africa and believing God for a revival. I, I'm, I'm sure that, was, that has been burning in your heart for so many years. Tell us, what do you sense in your heart for this nation? Uh, with the with the situation that we've been in, looking into the future, looking at the next 10, 15, 20, 50 years. I've always heard you speaking about having a 100-year plan, a 200-year plan. And I want right. you to just maybe encourage us as a people uh, in terms of what is God doing for our continent? Amen. Well, firstly, I believe that we are the remnant, you know, and I've yeah. been using that word so, so much the past years but to prepare the church and to prepare the people because there is coming a shaking and the remnant will be the ones that will survive. That is the message that I've been preaching for two weeks, oh, two years, excuse me, just like uh, John the Baptist, preparing the way of the Lord, you know, and now we see this. The remnant is now going to stand up. The remnant Amen. are the survivors, Amen. the one that will survive all these attacks. Mm. And the remnant are the ones that are going to stand up out of this and it's going to become wealthy. They're going to be pioneers. They're going to be innovators. They're going to be creators. Mm. I truly believe there's a spirit of the creator being released upon the body of Christ. Mm. Uh, and we will see entrepreneurship like never before. We will see a new norm uh, coming mm. forth out of this. We can never go back to which was the old norm. <laughs> yeah, can yeah. never be. can never be. We have to do church differently. We have to do a business differently. We have to deal with currencies differently. Mm. Um, so I really believe Haggai chapter 2, and I've prophesied this yes, um, yes. Yeah, last year, that there will come a, a shaking. Mm -hmm. And that shaking will determine a new economy. Amen. And that thing has just been put together. You know, I think the prophecy is on one of the pages that we can share with the people. It's just yes. Shaking, and we are in that shaking. Haggai chapter 2. I want to make make this very clear i do not believe god sent this yeah or the virus but god is using it for his good and um, we have to now understand the mind of god understand his heart he knows the future and if we can tap into his mind we will know the future mm -hmm. yeah so the shaking has caused a new economy to be birthed 
Mm -hmm. This new economy will be a mega economy, oh, which yeah. you are wrong, which this book is so, it's so vital and pivotal for this time of, mm -hmm. of where every, everybody is, you know, and, and for those of you, the viewers who are watching, you need to get this book in your hand so that you can understand what's happening and that you can really work with the mega flow because hey, the new right. economy is here and a mega economy is about to be birthed. Mm. I believe this is the time uh, where we will see deals and sales mm. like never mm. before. Mm. It's the time to buy property. It's the time to invest. The mm. stocks are low. Get into mm. the market. Mm. Get into the wow. place if you can. And because it's going to turn. It's going to turn. You know, mm. uh, Zoom, for instance, this platform that we are using, mm -hmm. just three months ago, they only had 10 million um, users worldwide. Mm -hmm. In literally a week, they went to 300 million viewers. Wow. So imagine wow. just, wow. I saw, I saw the stocks and I'm very, I'm still disappointed that I, that I didn't invest <laughs> into Zoom three months ago. <laughs> uh, because now it's, it's quite heavy to get in. Mm -hmm. But imagine you bought shares for $20 and now you can have, and it's, it's nearly, I think, mm -hmm. 200 and something dollars per share you would have made so much money. Exactly. So in the time of recession, we have to make sure that we are not recession minded. We are wow. investing, investor wow. minded. Wow. We need to see opportunities. We need to mm. release the spirit of the creator to come upon us and then right. see where God wants us to invest, how to uh, put our portfolios together, mm -hmm. how to make wealth. Because if we say the wealth of the wicked is coming, that's not gonna knock on your door. You mm -hmm. need to be in the system mm -hmm. That's to understand good. the system and pull the system out and to make money from that. So your book on the mega economy, I really believe there is a lot of answers there. There's a lot of structure there. There's a mm. lot of direction for people. And we need to get into the flow of what God is saying right now. So Amen. let's use the shaking to our benefit because after the shaking comes the greatest global move of the Holy mm. Spirit mm. Uh, mm. like never before. You know, I'm really anticipating a very strong move of the Holy Spirit right now that will be poured out upon every single person. Praise God. So Thank that's you what so I believe in God. Wow. Thank you so much for that. And I really want to acknowledge you again. I did in the book uh, that you gave me the, the title for the book. It was prophetic when you gave me that assignment and said, son, speak on birthing a mega economy. And today we have a whole book, we have a whole movement that is around that word that you spoke as a prophetic word. Yeah. And I'm so grateful uh, for your apostolic covering. But on the remnant, Dad, uh, when, we, when, we talk, when you talk about the remnant, something really keeps stirring up, uh, uh, according to, uh, to, to Haggai, that this remnant, when this shaking takes place and and uh, the remnant will begin to arise. Uh, what can believers do? What can churches do to be part of the remnant? How can a church become a remnant church? How can a believer become a remnant believer? Because there's many people watching that will be saying, I want to be a part of this shift that's going to take place as the, as the, the shaking subsides and this new uprising and this new revival begins to hit and set in. What can believers do? What can churches do? Well, you know, there's a couple of, of practical answers to that. And then mm -hmm. also the spiritual side, you know, mm -hmm. on the practical side, uh, I think it's very important that we are not left behind on what's happening now globally. We need to utilize the platforms we're using, the digital platforms, very strong. Because if you go and see the book of Acts, uh, 39 of the recorded miracles happen in homes. Mm -hmm. All right. So that shows me that God's going to use the homes in this end time move of God. Yeah. Right now, where people are watching from, they're watching from their homes, uh, just on a device, whether it's Apple TV or the, or the phone, but they're in their homes. So we need to really believe that God will take this technology, apps, websites, uh, mm -hmm digital television to bring into the homes of people and 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 then a practical side is to really get behind that and share and i call it the uh the digital evangelism you know mm. share like comment mm. all those mm. things that will create a movement you know facebook and all these platforms have never seen so much traffic of spiritual activities in their whole life Wow. That's already a move. That's, That's already a move. A, a, the church <laughs> of God, uh, you know, rising up, you mm -hmm. know, and spiritually, it's very important to be associated 
with the right type of people. That's you know, it's like the ten, wow. the 10 virgins that they all look the same. They all had the same lamps. They all had the same cell phone. They all had the same everything. But the ones yeah. who had the oil in, they were the ones that expected the son, mm -hmm. the, the Messiah or the bridegroom. And they were the one that had, you know, the, the supper with him. So it's what's on the inside. Spiritually, I want to say, it's all about who you associate with. Mm. You know, if you mm. follow, um, and I love this analogy, if you want to go from Johannesburg to Pretoria, and um, my suggestion is don't follow a parked car because you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> it's the same with the remnant, the same with the move of God. Don't yeah. follow parked people that's got that doesn't want to be part of the remnant that doesn't lovely. want to be part of the move of god and so we have an assignment more than ever before mm -hmm. to raise up the remnant to stand strong to be the remnant the end time move of god the supernatural breed mm -hmm. that carries the move of god carries the presence of god i'm so excited about the son because you know i've been preaching on the anointing or the faith the anointing and the glory the, the glory, different yeah. realms yeah. Of, of the supernatural and I've always said we need to go to the glory because in the glory, no man gets any, any praise or any glory for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's where God works by himself. And this is exactly what it is. We are in no church building where we can lay hands on people. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have armor bearers and we don't have buildings and we don't have, you know, you can't touch me. Now we are all depending upon God mm -hmm. to take the gospel yes. throughout all these mediums to the people. And that's why the remnant is being touched now. They are being prepared now. They are getting uh, into the place where they say, when we come out of this, we're going to be yeah. the people that are yeah. going to create wealth. We're going to be the ones that were not affected by recession. We are the remnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are not going to be affected by church buildings. We are the remnant. We've built mm -hmm. a bigger ministry. We are not going to be affected by debt. We came out of debt. There's so much stuff wow. that, that, that distinguish and separates you know, the remnant the from remnant. the rest of the crowd. You know. Praise God. Praise God. And just on a and you are part end, of that. I, definitely. I've, I've been pursuing. <laughs> amen, Dad. Amen. Amen. And I believe our viewers really are getting stirred up now to say we will arise and not follow parked cars. We will arise and go after something yeah. that is moving, a movement that is supernatural, which is what you have been carrying uh, for so many Absolutely. years faithfully. Uh, been under so much attack and so much opposition, but your faithfulness, your commitment to, to running with that mantle really for me has given me so much courage to also stand and arise and be part of the remnant. But just on association, probably before we pray for, for South Africa, but just on association, you know, it's, it's so, so important. I mean, for myself, I remember when I connected with you, began to associate with you, everything in my life began to change. Our ministry changed, my family changed, my ministry, my businesses, my finances, everything just began to change by virtue wow. of association. I'm so grateful for that. And I believe it's such an important key. What would you say yeah. to either ministries, churches around South Africa that are saying, we're looking to associate, we're looking to connect with something that is supernatural. What would be a word of wisdom, apostolic word of wisdom that you would give as an encouragement to them? You know, son, uh, increase comes by association. Absolutely. And influence comes by association. Mm -hmm. If we look at Abraham, a lot was associated to him and wealthy. A uh, lot became very wealthy just because yeah. of association. Yeah. Uh, if we look at Peter, you know, um, all the partners that he called into help with the catch, mm. you know, they were associated with him. So mm. here's the question. They, the, the partners that were associated with Peter, mm. they did not even believe in Jesus. Mm. They did not even sow money. They did not do anything. They were just associated and they got the harvest of that. Wow. The power of association can, can cause my family to be blessed, mm. even if they don't, you know, believe in me or whatever. The mm -hmm. power that we carry of influence and of association is so dynamic. It's so crucial for this time. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot see my life without being associated to spiritual leaders and authority wow. and That's sowing good. upwards that I can receive downwards. You know, uh, in this time of, of the lockdown, we have really sharpened our tools to make sure our seed goes in the right direction. Absolutely. If I sow upwards, it will come down. 
if I bring influence, I will receive right. influence. You know, association is very, very, very powerful. Yeah. Since I'm associated with, with ministries and Pastor Maldonado and, and all these great men of God, it has caused so much open doors and mm. so much influence mm. in my life. Mm. And we protect it. We love them. We cover them. We make sure we sow into them. We cover them with our yeah. words, with our hearts, our finances. And, and we, if we protect that association, we receive the harvest of that. Yeah. And for, yeah. you know, on the practical side, we really want to build a movement. You know me. Yeah. We have been building the movement of the supernatural for years. Yes. And we're renting yes. arenas. And we had to cancel Cape Town this year because of this uh, COVID-19 yeah. uh, pandemic. But we're going to do an online, uh, you know, conference. And I believe God is going to just gather you know, twice, hey, three times as many, hey, many people hey, as would have been in the arena to hmm. come together. It's like Ronald Bonker. Remember hmm. when he had the tent and of 50,000 people and the tent destroyed it, oh, the wind destroyed the tent. And he says, God, now what now? And God said to him, I haven't called you for 50,000 people for a tent. You know, you need to get out in the open and you need to get the arenas. And now we see, it's, well, before he died, he reached millions of people per Absolutely. service. Yeah. Or Absolutely. he could have limited himself to 50,000 people hmm. in a tent. And I believe this is as well with the movement of the supernatural. We are getting out of the arenas and we're getting globally with the online platform. And right. we're going to see right. millions of people being touched by the supernatural power of God. And if they all want to be, they can just follow, you know, the Facebook pages and the YouTube mm -hmm. channels and be activated in that. It's, yeah. it's, it's to be activated in that. You can't just walk in it and just, you know, oh, I want to be a carrier. You need to be activated in that. You need to have somebody yeah. to activate yeah. you in yeah. wealth. Mm -hmm. in prosperity you've mm -hmm. been activated in that yeah. and that's yeah. why you can walk in that yes. and that's why we can talk about this with yeah. boldness you need to be activated in that you need to walk in that you need to believe it you need to follow it and be in association with this uh, mm. and that's been my heart to activate the fivefold ministers around the world you know with the flcs that we are doing and the movements is to activate god's people that they can also walk in the power of the Holy Ghost, Amen. in the supernatural, and, and really be prepared for the coming wealth uh, of, that is coming to the righteous uh, in this end time move of God. Praise God. Thank you so much for that, Dad. And I, re son. I really want to say thank you because my association with you helped me move my businesses from doing small deals to doing yeah. multi-million rand deals. So association really, really works. And I'd encourage Amen. our viewers, it would really be great for you to connect. Follow Apostle Nikki on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, on all the social media yeah. platforms. You will get resources that will activate you for the supernatural. You'll learn how to live in the supernatural. Your church will become a supernatural church with signs, wonders, and miracles. And that's what he carries. Dad, do you mind just praying for South Africa before uh, we let you go? I know you're out in Miami, in, in, in America. They're doing all kinds of wonderful ministry. We've been watching you on, on Faith Broadcasting Network, getting blessed from here in South Africa. But please just pray for our country yes. before, as we close. So, Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for South Africa. We pray for every person in cabinet, in government, our ministers, and most of all for our president. We pray for the glory of God to come upon him and every minister that may they be led by the spirit of wisdom, counsel, and might. We thank you that a new economy will be birthed in our nation, that entrepreneurs will arise, that wealth will come, that the economy will be restored, that we will be back, Father, better than before. We pray for every businessman and woman right now to be blessed, to be prosperous. May they soon recover everything that the devil stole from them. In the name of Jesus, bless every viewer, bless every follower with the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We bless you, family. God bless. Wow, wow, wow. Wasn't that powerful? Oh my goodness. I am so, so excited that the word that has just gone forth from Apostle is, is a very rich word, both for the continent of Africa, but also for our country, South Africa. Thank you so much, Apostle Nikki. That's my spiritual dad, a man of God whose life has impacted mine, like I shared. Uh, it's, it's just been an amazing journey being connected to him.
and movement of the supernatural which has been taking the supernatural right across africa getting people healed delivered set free but praise god for that that's exactly what we need in this time where we see the supernatural power of god at work in people's lives to totally change and transform uh, people's lives and that's why I want to just take a few more minutes with you. Please do post your questions. If you have questions or comments that you'd like to give, feedback that you'd like to give us, let us know where you're watching us from. Please let us know. We want to pray with you, minister to you, stay connected with you, right from Cape to Cairo. Praise God. And, and as we stay connected where there's unity there, God commands the blessing. I believe in this time we're going to see the church arise and become more powerful than we have ever seen before. Thank God that even today the president announced that uh, churches can now meet in, in, in the scaled measures and following the precautions that, uh, that will be stipulated by the Ministry of Health. And definitely the church will comply and will keep the rules and follow on and on and submission to those that are in authority. Praise God. But I think it is significant that at this time, as we begin the 52 days of rebuilding the walls, we will have people coming to gather together in the church, worshiping and ministering to the Lord. And God's glory is going to come down, even if it is 50 people meeting in a, in a building to worship the Lord with our masks on, with everything in place and sanitizers everywhere. But it is a significant season. We will see the rebuilding of the walls. Now, God really spoke to me uh, very strongly. That is why I'm willing to commit 52 days of, of this period for the next uh, month, two months, and so on, just gathering and meeting with you. And I want you to call intercessors. Call the prayer people that you know. Call the saints that you know. Share this with them. With them, create a watch party with them. Invite them. Share the link. Let's join together. I'm so, so excited because we're not the only ones that are calling for prayer. There are many wonderful intercessory groups, prayer groups, churches that are gathering for prayer, gathering to encourage people to pray and to come around in the place of the word, in speaking the word over our nation. The spiritual atmosphere of Africa. Africa has never been deeper, richer, and more powerful than it is right now. We're going to see an outbreak of revival in a glorious way. Praise God forevermore. I'm so excited about what God is doing. But as we get ready to take your questions, as you post your questions, I'll get your questions and we'll be able to answer whatever questions or comments you may want. I want to let you know that yesterday we happened to do the book launch for Birthing a Mega Economy, and the book is called Birthing a Mega Economy, The Rise of the African Continent, The Rise of the African Continent. And the book is loaded with wisdom principles and prophetic utterances that will position the church that will position you and I the believers to begin to pray accurately with focus with clarity of vision because one of the challenges that we've had in this decade in this past decade that we've gone through is we heard so much about the devil did this and the devil did that and the devil is going to do this but now we need to change and shift our focus from what the devil has said and done to what God is doing because what God is saying and doing is more powerful than what the devil is trying to do. Satan cannot stop the work of God. Jesus, the son of God, the head of the church himself said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So I want to encourage you to join and follow me on all our social media platforms. You will get content, you'll get prayer points, you'll get prayer direction, you'll get wisdom and knowledge, you'll get uh, biblical foundations for the rebuilding of the walls of Africa and you birthing a mega economy in your life and per in, the, in the family that you come from, the city, the town that you come from, and in our nation, South Africa, and ultimately our continent. Continent. That's what we're speaking into. There's a shifting in the realm of the spirit. And I want to read a passage of scripture here just to help us understand where we are going. This is in the book of Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. Earlier on, I read from the book of Nehemiah and the book of Ezra. Now, what is unique about Zechariah, Nehemiah, uh, Ezra, and Haggai and Malachi is the period within which these prophets arose. 
They arose at a time when God was doing two significant things. Number one, he was rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem with Nehemiah, the one who was the cupbearer of the, the, the prince or the, the Persian emperor. And he comes back to Jerusalem, rebuilds, brings the people together. And I have a whole chapter in the book called the Nehemiah Factor. It challenges leaders, leaders of society, leaders of the community, political leaders to say, what can we do to rebuild? And what can we expect? What are some of the challenges and the opposition that we will face and some of the hurdles we'll have to deal with in rebuilding these walls and rebuilding your personal economic walls? So in the book, you begin to learn that. But what's unique about these prophets is they prophesied at the time of the rebuilding of the walls, number one, and they prophesied at the rebuilding of the temple, number two. God is always interested in building the walls and building the temple. The walls talks about protection. It talks about keeping what is ours. It talks about sustaining and protecting what is ours. You, you put the walls to keep the enemy out, but to also manage the resources that are within. So walls are very, very important. And then secondly, worship is very, very important. Worship is that thing that brings the spiritual atmosphere. In fact, I talk about a very interesting story that's in the Bible about Hezekiah, because the Bible says Hezekiah opened the doors of the temple because his predecessor had closed the doors of the temple. And when the doors of the temple were closed and people were not praying, people were not worshiping, the priests went into secular jobs. Can you imagine the priests now had to go and sell car insurance and sell vehicles and do all kinds of stuff? And it's, 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 it's not the right thing for men and women of God to have to be struggling for sustenance. And that's what happened because the nation had gone into a state of let's close the worship. No more worship, no more prayer, no more loving Jehovah and loving the Lord. And because of that, the atmosphere in the nation closed down. Judah went into poverty. The nation was in poverty. But when they opened up the doors, when Hezekiah, the Bible says in the first year, in the first month, and the first week of his reign, he immediately put decrees to say, hey, let's rebuild. Let's open up the temple. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to worship. Let's go back to worshiping according to the order of David. The songs of David, the books of his songs came out. The instruments came out and the atmosphere was filled with praise and worship like I believe we're going to see happening in the days to come as we begin to gather again as churches to worship and to lift up the name of Jehovah God and the houses of worship are opening and that's going to change the atmosphere. But when the atmosphere changed, the Bible tells us that within five months, they moved from poverty to mega economies. They birthed a mega economy in five months because the spiritual environment had changed. So you will learn in the book how to change your personal environment spiritually in order to change the economic status. You can birth mega economies the day the spiritual environment changes in your life. We see that with, I don't know if any of you have ever done a study of Martin Luther, the reformer. Martin Luther is an amazing man. He was faced, he was, he was resisted by the church at, in his time that wanted to keep uh, the Bible in a language that was not common to the people. He want, they wanted to keep it in a language that was exclusive just to the clergy, the, those that were learned. And the common people, which was German at that time, the common people spoke German language and they couldn't read the Bible. But when he then translated and put the Bible out and people began to read the Bible, and he wrote his thesis with the points about salvation by faith in God, by the grace of God, and he was persecuted, they nearly killed him, etc. He, he went into asylum and was hiding from the church because the church wanted to kill him. But when the word came to the people in a language they understood, what happened? There was the reformation. And what was the result of the reformation? There was an acceleration of the industrial revolution, the agricultural revolution, Revolution. There was an acceleration in medicine, in inventions, in patents. There was an, an acceleration of economic boosts. And oh my goodness, the word of God is the foundation.
nation that will reform our continent and bring back a move of God that will change the spiritual atmosphere of Africa. And I believe that God is calling the church. I believe that God is calling the body of Christ. I believe that God is calling you and me to rise up and pray, to rise up and prophesy. No, not curse the leadership, not curse the government, not curse the presidents, not curse those in authority. The Bible says, I encourage you, I exhort you, that first of all, we pray for those that are in authority. Why should we pray for them? The Bible says that you may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. How do we live a godly life? How do we live in honesty? And corruption is eradicated from our borders, eradicated from Africa, eradicated from the, the political houses, eradicated from the society, eradicated from the place of transaction. How do we get and get things in order? Pray for those in authority. And that's what we are doing. We're praying for our leaders. We love our leaders. We love all the presidents, the prime ministers, the kings, the premiers, those that are running the different countries from Cape to Cairo. We love you. We believe in you. We believe God will use you. The Bible says the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and he turneth it whichever way he want as the waters. So we believe God will use any president, any leader, regardless of their background, regardless of their political background regardless of their spiritual connection god is moving in africa it is a sovereign work of god it is a sovereign move of the spirit of god praise god i hope you've posted your question i'm getting all excited here but please type there africa is blessed I type in there africa for africans it is our country our continent our land our resources our prosperity Africa is blessed. As we get ready to pray, one more time, I want to read the scripture I gave to you. Uh, Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. Please let us know where you're watching from. We want to pray with you. Let us know what country you're watching from. If you're watching from South Africa, type in there and put in the South African flag. If you're watching from a different country, put whatever flag your, your country is and know that we're praying for you. One of these days you will hear us. We're coming to Botswana. We're coming to Zimbabwe. We're coming to Malawi, Tanzania, Uganda, Liberia. We're coming to Egypt. We're, com we're coming to your country. Next 52 days, every country on African soil will be prayed for, blessed, and prophesied over. The scripture reads, And I will shake the nations, and they will come with their wealth of all the nations, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, praise God forevermore. This is a promise from heaven. We can give thanks to that, to the Lord for that. He says, I will shake the heavens and they will come with their glory, with their wealth, with their precious things. And I will fill my house with glory, says the Lord. God is saying it. it, it, it he, he, he puts his signature on the statement. And he says, I will do this. So we thank God for what he's doing in the church. And then the next verse says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. What is he saying? He is saying that the economies of our continent, the economies of the world are his. There are people that have robbed God. There are people that have robbed the people of God. There are people that have abused the resources of this planet. But it doesn't matter what they are doing. God says, the gold is mine. The silver is mine. He was speaking on the basis that the economies of this world were sustained by a commodity-based fiscal system or financial system. Now it's, now it's more fiat or fiat uh, currencies that are operating instead of commodity currencies. But God was saying the gold that sustains those economies. I told you 40% of the world's gold comes from the, the Southern African region. That means all that gold that's coming out of Southern Africa, it belongs to God. Praise God forevermore. And he's going to use that to build the church. He's going to use that to take away poverty. He's going to use that to build schools. He's going to use that to build hospitals and facilities to make life beautiful and comfortable for his people from Cape to Cairo. 
Poverty is being eradicated. Sickness and disease is being eradicated. Shortage of water and resources is being eradicated. Glory to God. Verse 9 says, The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give shalom, says the Lord of hosts. Isn't this beautiful? Notice that God keeps introducing himself as the Lord of hosts. Why is he doing that? He's doing that because the, the Amplified actually says, I am the God of angel armies. There are angel armies that have been dispatched and deployed across Africa. <laughs> in, the book, in the book, Birthing a Mega Economy, I talk about what the Bible calls watcher angels. Watcher angels are angels that are assigned to watch over nations, to watch over economies, to watch over the movement of people, to watch over the well-being of people. Watcher angels have been dispatched over Africa. God has sent a, a batch of watcher angels that are moving into different countries, that are moving into different cities, different communities, villages, suburbs. There's a new breed of watcher angels, not a new breed, they've always been there, but a, a newly assigned with a fresh word according to the prophetic time that we are in. They have come to say, what is it that is going on to and fro from Cape to Cairo? What is it that is happening with the economies of Africa? What is it that is happening with the well-being of the people of Africa? What is it that is happening with the voices of the African people that are crying out for restitution? The voices have gone forth. And I want you to know the angels have been deployed. And God is telling us right here, that he will build his house and restore the glory in his house. Praise God. I have, I have a question here. So I want to take this question and then we are going to pray. Praise God. How can I be a part or contribute to rebuild? How can I be a part or contribute to rebuild? Thank you so much for that question. And here's how you can be a part. We are going to be uploading tomorrow the details on our website, drtitch.com, where you'll be able to download the whole, uh, uh, well, part of the this week's prayer points for the country. So one way you can contribute is by praying with us for Africa. Join us in prayer join us in worship join us in connecting with all of these men and women of god but if you want to contribute in kind one of the things that we have done is we have created packages that as are dedicated to the leaders of countries we have put we're putting packages together that will send to prime ministers presidents kings monarchs whatever the title is the heads of state right across in all 54 countries we have begun our protocol talking through uh, the necessary protocols we're going through to speak to them to say here is a gift that we are bringing as a seed to you to say we believe in you we love you africa is praying for you so if you want to to donate or give cash or sow seed, you can let us know, you can inbox us and our team will be able to respond and let you know how to facilitate for those resources to get to us. And what will happen with those resources, they are going to ministering to presidents. We're believing God that presidents will get born again, prime ministers will get born again, kings will get born again, governors will get born again, that by the time we're done with our period of prayer and the period of activating, after the prayer time, we're activating this faith and beginning to approach the different presidents, getting time to communicate, to speak, with them because we not only are praying we have strategy we have ideas we have business models we have models of re revitalizing the agriculture of our continent we have models of uh, revitalizing the infrastructural development of our continent we have we have some experts that have been working with some of the top developers globally that we are consulting with if you read the book you'll actually see a couple of excerpts from some of their papers that have been submitted brilliant work that has been done set up to develop our continent so we are really here to address this thing we're here to make a difference we're here to challenge what satan has done in raping and abusing the people of africa it's time 
for Africa to arise. And on that note, I want to pray. On that note, I want to just take a minute, join me wherever you are, and let's begin to just pray together. Let's begin to just speak the word of the Lord together. Let's begin to make some declarations in the realm of the Spirit together. Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, you said the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Father, thank you that every resource that is in African soil, on African soil, will arise and come and be a benefit to the people of Africa. In the name of Jesus, we declare that poverty is rebuked. The spirit of poverty is rebuked from Cape to Cairo. As Apostle Nikki spoke and said, after the shaking will come mega wealth. Africa has been shaken and now it is time for mega wealth. Let our business and, and our industry begin to blossom and flourish. Father, not even looking to investors, but looking to what we can create out of our own soil and out of our nations in the name of Jesus, that presidents, prime ministers, leaders of our nations will begin to realize the great value that we have in our continent in the name of Jesus. I speak prophetically right now that we will see some of the most powerful multinational conglomerates arise out of Africa. You have cried and called and said, we don't have markets for our products. We don't have places to take our products. But hear the word of the Lord. I heard the voice of God saying, there is a sound in the atmosphere. There is a sound in the realm of the spirit. And I said, what sound is it, oh God? He said, it is, it is the sound of people rushing to the marketplace, rushing to the place of exchange, rushing to the place of trade, Oh, I hear the sound of merchants. I hear the sound of transactions. I hear the sound of money moving and wealth moving. I hear the sound of feet busy running upon the streets to get to the marketplace of transaction. The Spirit of God is moving across Africa. We will see companies arise and become wealthy and influential. We will see the economies of our continent flourish and blossom in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God forevermore. Thank you so much for joining in. As I leave you right now, let me just remind you, if you go to our website, you can either go to drtitch.com to get details about how to get the book or make purchases of the ebooks from there. drtitch.com, there's a shopping button there, or you can go to birthingamegaeconomy.africa birthing a mega economy dot africa you will see the whole vision of what we are doing in these 52 days why we're doing all that we're doing it's on a uh, birthing a mega economy dot africa it's a it's it's an ethnic website dot africa so don't forget that part birthing a mega economy the title of the book dot africa go there you'll be able to see what we are doing what we desire to see over the next 52 days thank you thank you so much for watching this and joining us thank you for being a part of this this is dr tish tanya Nua, uh, the founder of birthing a mega economy the author of birthing a mega economy join us for the next now it's 51 days after this for the next 51 days we're praying for africa god bless you